When you start working with Winnels, you must configure your instance correctly. You can either work in a Winnels demo version or the full version. If it is the Winnels demo version, then it has some limitations. I will be using the full version here. You can always buy your version from us or any authorized evc.de representative. I am running my Winnels at the moment. This is Winnels 5, the full registered version. How does it differ from the unregistered version? First of all, you will not be able to use this button, which is export. It is not possible to export a binary file. The file that we can directly load into the car, that one that we can read from the car using an external interface, such as CAS3. It has limitations on a copy area or the amount of data copied between two areas. It is a security measure, so you don't copy modified files to other hex editors and then save them from them, so that way you can save them into the car later, program into the car later. A very important thing is that if you start your work with Winnels from the demo version, which you can download from the Winnels DE website freely, it is worth knowing what happens to your files at the moment you buy a full version. There will be one trouble. The full version will not show the files that you have prepared with Winnels demo version. Therefore, at the very beginning, let's see where the files are located. The Winnel files are located, they all have the OLS extension, and they are in the user directory, but it is not a typical user personal directory. The moment we go to this computer C drive, then we go to users, it is not in a personal user directory, well in my case it is Tpyro, it is in a public directory. This is where we'll find the EVC subdirectory and inside another one, Winnels. All my files are located right there. If I want to move all my projects from the demo version into a full version, I will simply copy all the contents of the Winnels demo directory in the, into the inside of the Winnels directory. And that's all. and then the projects will already appear here. Now you can open and use them same way as earlier in Winnels demo, but you can export them as a binary file. Here I have a binary readout from the car. I have given it an extension bin. In this case, it is a Nissan Leaf readout and I named it my Nissan Leaf bin. It's a binary readout. It simply contains byte by byte the contents of the engine controller flash and is something different from the project in Winnels OLS extension. Let's see. The file My Nissan Leaf after reading is 1280 kilobytes long. The moment I open this file in Winnels, I simply drop it into the Winnels. I'm going to have a project produced. And now, when we go to the directory that we showed ourselves a moment ago, which contains all of our files, all of our projects, we will discover that our Nissan Leaf is the file with the extension OLS and uh, another size. It has a size of 1330 kilobytes. And it was, as a binary file, 1280. Why? Because the OLS file is a container, contains not only the binary file that we read from the car, but it may also contain all the versions of that file that we have prepared so far. Yes, they will be stored inside there. And all the maps that we find. The maps are the all sorts of fields and points of interest that 
uh, were inside such binary file and we have uh, signed them, there will be also inside that file. Finally, it can contain several additional information about the project that we have entered, typed ourselves. For example, this is a Nissan and it is a Nissan Leaf. If it is not here, of course, we can always add this manually. In general, let's try to fill in as many fields as possible, because later on this window allow us, if we have a large number of files, to easily orient and search for files. Also, the difference between an ALS file and a binary file is that the binary file can be loaded into the car and uploaded into the car. Of course, we also read it from the car, whereas the ALS file is our project file. It contains our binary file and all the versions that we have created, so at any time we can select the appropriate version of or the original and export it from Windows uh, file so that we create a bin binary file and then program it into the car. We do not need to carry on our binary files when they are uploaded into Windows projects. We don't have to copy all the binary files into separate directory and then keep them sorted because they are always in our database of Windows, easily accessible. On the other hand, of course, the database in Windows should be copied regularly and archived to avoid losses in a case of computer damage. Once we have read our car file, the binary file, using a tool provided by the third-party vendor such as Alien Tech, we can open it in Windows in several ways. Typically, the quickest way is to drop the file into the blue box area on the left. This always means creating a new project, even if there will be some text, there will be some named maps. This changes nothing. It will always be a new project. It is a very important to distinguish that hovering over the blank screen here also creates a new project. On the other hand, if there is already a project open here, dropping will create a version of it. So, this is not always what we would be most interested in. The second method is to create an empty project and then import the file. We then have to find this file for ourselves here. The third method is to create a new project and then press file here or in the most frequently used directories select the file you are potentially interested in. I was fortunate enough to find it here. I have my Nissan Leaf here and at the very beginning we have to decide how we want to import and to which client we would like to import our file. Maybe at first it seems complicated that we have something like multiple clients inside a single instance of Windows. However, for a time being, we sort of don't need to worry about it. Our client is called default. And this default client, which is the base client for our Windows, and it is where all our files will go. Clients are a type of database and this allows us to divide the files into various databases associated with other tuners, with the works that we sell and we allow someone to automatically upload through the EVC portal. Generally speaking, these are a little more advanced. So we go to the next screen. Then Windows will ask us if we want to import this as a new project or it may find projects that are similar in some areas. Maybe only a part of data, part of maps uh, as we call them or the whole area of the file. It is presented as a percentage of similarity. If we see that we have exactly same 
project already in the database 100% same. So then it is a good idea not to import uh, another file because we will litter with the same original uh, or same version uh, in our uh, Winnows database. So it's much better not to import but use existing project. However, it is up to you. Next window is used to check what is the checksum of the file. What is the checksum? It is a kind of protection of the data integrity and helps to protect uh, binary against chip tuners too. If it is known, reverse engineered by creators of such programs as Windows is, or alternatively producers of OBD interfaces for car flashing, programming, Gasolian Tech, CAS, KTAC, DIMSPORT, CMD and many other, we can and obviously we need to correct it before reprogramming a car. Otherwise, car chip tuning is impossible. We can use the information provided here by pressing the start button. At this point, the text found inside our Nissan Leaf file are sent to Germany to the EVC and analyzed. Well, we have the answer that the EVC does not know how to count the checksum of the file. On the other hand, this information about the checksum, if only delivered, can be beneficial to us to find out to make sure whether it is one type of ECU or another. It will be very dangerous for us to count the same checksum more than once. That is, for example, counting this sum once in Winnows and counting it second time within Alien Tech CAS and then programming the binary into the car. Counting the checksum twice can lead to that sum being wrong instead of being correct. Car won't start then. Making long story short, you do not need checksum calculation within Winnows if you only have them within flusher of the car. Here we can fill the project data. Some of this data is found automatically by the Winnows program. On the other hand, let's try to fill as many fields as possible, at least everything we know about the car, because this will help us to easily find the projects, orient ourselves in our database in the future, when there are already very, very many files there. Finally, we have reached the point where our binary file has been properly opened inside Windows.